Welcome to Developing a Useful Spending Plan. I'm Carol Roberts, your Community Resource Development Agent at the University of Florida IFAS Extension Office in St. Lucie County. Today we're going to talk about how to create a spending plan that will help give you protection and control over your money. We're going to take a little bit of different look at the money that we use every day and I know we all have our own way of keeping control over our money. Maybe it's a good tool. Maybe you could use some pointers. That's I'm not here to tell you to throw the whole plan out the window, or your whole system for keeping control, track of your money. But let's look at some ways that we can make it a little bit more efficient for you. Doing that takes a little bit of change in perspective. We need to look at something that we work with every day in just a little bit different way. So in the next slide is going to help us with that. So I know a lot of us have seen the logo on our screen many times. We, a lot of trucks around town show us this logo, show up on our front door. But I wonder how many of us have actually seen the symbol that FedEx put in the middle of their logo that helped exemplify the fact that they are always on the go. They're always moving forward. If you haven't seen it yet, look between at the white space between the E and the X. <clears throat> Do you see the arrow? If you have, now that you've seen that, you'll never see the FedEx logo without seeing it first. So thank you for you're you're welcome for that. Um, I, but now that we've seen that, we've got a little bit of a mind shift on how to look at things differently. So let's jump into looking at our money with that same mind shift. I found this cartoon in a newspaper several years ago, and I don't remember what political party it was referring to or anything about the politics. I just saw that this is a great example of how a lot of us feel every day. I think probably at the time I felt that's how I felt every day. And we're, we're pretty good at it, us, us humans. We're balancing the, the children, the house, the family, the job, the, all the other responsibilities. And we're good. We can keep all those balls in the air until an unexpected one comes at us that says something like um, car repair. And then what happens? All the balls fall down. So how do we keep that from happening? We need a spending plan, something that will help us to, under, to, to get control of our money and make sure that we're protected against those unexpected balls that make all the balls fall down. So let's look at what our spend, how, how we can create a spending plan that'll be that great tool for us. Are you thinking to yourself, why in the world do I need a spending plan? Just because the county extension office said I should? No, we're gonna tell you that a spending plan it's for your own good. It's for your own control and your own protection from life's unexpected expenses. Things happen. Kids fall out of trees. People get hurt. Expenses come out of nowhere. Things break down. We have to be ready for those things. And we need to be make sure that we can still keep moving forward when life tries to knock us back. Also, a spending plan is a really good tool to help you reduce your impulse spending. And I can tell you from my own personal experience that I used to just walk through the store and go, those shoes, I have to have those shoes. And now I still have that same thought. However, it's immediately followed up by the question, did I already spend my shoe budget money? and it becomes a habit. It's a good habit to be in. And let's get in those habits so we can get some control over our money. And we can set these financial goals and get there because that's important. Writing down our goals is a major step in making them happen. So let's start with the first step in a spending plan, setting our financial goals. So when you registered for this course, you've received a link to a publication about creating a spending plan with all six steps. We actually, in this presentation, are going to bump it down to five steps, and, but our first one is still the same. We're going to identify our goals because if we don't know where we're going, we don't know how to even start to get there. And that's what goal setting is. It's determining where do you want to be a year from now. 
five years from now, even further out, we have to set those goals so we can make them happen. And it's, it's really nice to say, ah, my goal is I'm going to be rich. Great. That's a, nice, it's a good start, but it's not really specific. So we want to talk about smart goals that are specific, measurable, attainable, and or adjustable. We'll talk about that. Re, uh, realistic and time limited. So specific isn't very important. Um, I want to be rich. Exactly. How are you going to get rich? How are you going to make that happen? And what number is rich? There's where the measurable comes in. How do we know when we've reached rich? We have to have a number to go by. So we need a measurable goal. How about attainable? Certainly, whatever your skills are, you may be rich in the future. Um, but maybe it needs to be adjustable. To, it might take a little bit longer or it might take a little bit less money to be considered rich. Who knows in the future what the future holds, but we also need it to be realistic. I'm going to be rich because I'm going to win the lottery. You're more likely to get hit by lightning. So let's try to make some, come up with a more realistic plan for how we're going to become rich and time limited. We are humans. We need deadlines. I don't know about you, but I work best with a deadline. So I need to set a definite goal, time limit for my goal. When am I going to make this happen? So as you're listening to the presentation, you can use that handout that I sent you to, to follow along and complete your own spending plan. Or you can use a simple piece of paper. Let's look at what a spending goal look, a spending plan looks like. As we go along, I'm going to show you examples of a spending plan that I created just with simple numbers. I like easy round numbers, you'll see. And uh, just to get in for you to get an idea of what this looks like when you put it together. So here's an example of some smart goals for a short term goal. I thought, you know what? We really need an emergency fund. So we're going to start saving now. And uh, we estimate that we're going to have $300 by the end of the year if we start putting away $25 a month now in a savings account. Also, uh, for a long-term goal, we have some credit card debt we want to get paid off, about $2,500 worth. And we would like to get it paid off faster, but realistically, considering our budget, and this number could change, we think we can get it paid off reasonably in 24 months, and that would take $85. If you divide $2,500 by 24 months, that brings you to $85 a month that, to, to pay that off. Um, for a long-term goal, we really want to take that dream vacation. Five years from now, 60 months down the road, which is kind of like an average car loan, we are going to be laying on the beach in the sand in somewhere in the Caribbean, and that's going to take us about $3,000 to really enjoy ourselves. So if we put aside $50 a month starting today, and 60 months from now, we'll have $3,000 plus interest. And um, we'll. this is our... our smart goals can without looking at the rest of our budget this may have to be adjusted in the end but right now that's really where we want to be and what we want to make happen and we figure this is going to take us a total of 160 dollars a month to put aside for our goals all right so we know where we want to be in the future but let's look at the fuel that helps us get to that place that road trip of life. Well, let's look at our income. Some of us are lucky. We have a steady paycheck that uh, is always the same. Cushy County employee like myself, but we, we know what our paycheck's gonna be. It doesn't fluctuate. We don't get overtime. Uh, um, so it's easy for us to calculate our pay. Others don't have that luxury. Sometimes we're affected by the weather or how busy our place of work is. And we might get sent home if the if the weather's not good and then we lose income. So what happens if your pay fluctuates like that? We suggest that you start with the least amount you might expect to make in a month. What, so when the least happens, you're covered. You're no, you know you're okay, you plan for that. When the least doesn't happen, that's great. That means you get to your goals that much faster. It'll be less than 60 months before you're laying on the beach in the Caribbean, right? So. If you're not sure what your take home pay is, you can use this calculation to help you figure it out. You multiply your hourly rate times the number of hours you work per week 
to come up with your gross income. And then you have to subtract the taxes that Uncle Sam's going to take. So uh, multiply your gross income by about by 15%. That's usually um, a safe number. And you'll find out what your take-home pay is. Actually, if you have any other expenses that are deducted by your employer, such as for uniforms or health insurance or anything like that, you want to make sure you deduct that as well. And then you can come up with your weekly gross. Multiply that by four if you get paid every Friday. If you get paid every other week, you want to multiply that by two. Or twice a month, you want to multiply that by two. And then you can figure out how much your monthly net income, the amount of take-home pay you have per month to survive on. If you have any other additional income sources, you want to include that here. Things like SNAP benefits, child support, or any, any uh, say you rent out a room to someone, that income, you want to make sure all of your income is allocated to covering your expenses. Make sure that you know where your money's going and, and making sure that you're spending all of your money wisely. So here's a quick example of what that looks like. Um, I chose a $12 an hour wage. Somebody working full time, 40 hours a week would cut, would gross $480 a week. Um, multiply that by 15% for taxes. Then you would take out, take away $72 and come up with a weekly net salary of 408. Notice that I didn't include any other expenses like health insurance or uniforms like I mentioned. If that's your case, you would for your spending plan. And this person gets paid every Friday, so we're going to multiply that 408 times 4, 4 weeks per month, and we come up with a weekly, or I'm sorry, a monthly income of $1,632. If you have a two per, two fit, per Two income family, you want to make sure that you inc include all the incomes for your household. Okay, so the next step is we have to look at where it all goes. Where does it go? You get paid, you pay everybody that has to be paid before the next paycheck comes in, and then you look at your hand and you have, what, well, $5 left for gas and groceries. Hopefully that's not your situation. I've been there before, it happens. What we want to make sure is that we can climb out of that and not have it happen every week. That's called living paycheck to paycheck, and that's not comfortable. Then we can't get ahead if we're doing that. So that's why we're doing a spending plan. As we look at our expenses, we're going to break this up into two steps because we have a lot of expenses, and it can be overwhelming to think about all of them at the same time. So let's look at our fixed expenses first. We call fixed, ex fixed expenses those... Um, monthly bills that you usually have to pay. They're usually required to be paid every month or periodically like auto insurance um, or rent. They're usually a fixed payment date sometime during the month, not always. And they're usually about the same cost each month. Sometimes our utility bill can fluctuate, but um, you know, because we live in Florida and in the summer months, uh, we're trying to keep our houses cooler. If you're utility bill really fluctu fluctuates, you might want to talk to your utility provider about budget billing. That can be a way to help get your expenses under control, make it easier for you to budget. But so these are, these are those fixed expenses, things like credit card bills, um, auto payments, rent, uh, life insurance, premiums, other, th you know, we all have those fixed expenses we have to pay every month. Um, also, there's one thing we need to make sure is a fixed expense because if it is, we'll value ourselves just as much as we value all those other people that get our money. Did you include your goals as a fixed expense? We need to do that on this step because if we don't, then they won't happen. If we consider ourselves just as important as the landlord, as the utility provider, as everybody else that we give our money to, we value ourselves just as much, we will make sure we include our goals and we'll actually get there. So let's see what this looks like. All right, for my spending plan example, let's see, I've got some rent, 
that may be kind of low for some of us. Utilities, cable and internet, auto insurance, phone, and oh, there's my goals. So total ex fixed expenses for my example spending plan comes to 1,450. Now, we, if you remember what the income was, you're, you're, you're probably feeling a little frustrated right now. This is the step where everybody says, okay, I give up. I know I'm already out of money. We haven't even looked at our variable expenses yet. So, but please don't give up. This is going to be a valuable tool and we need to get through these next couple of steps so that we can use this tool. Don't get frustrated. Um, one thing I wanted you to notice is what expenses are missing on my example that you might have. This person doesn't have a car payment. They're just paying auto insurance. Uh, this person um, doesn't have a house phone. They're not budgeting for credit card bills. But wait, wait, they kind of are because we included in our goals paying our credit card debt off. So we did include our credit card debt in there. Um, we didn't include garbage collection if, if we have to pay for that. So think of some fixed expenses that you might have that aren't in included on this one so you can make sure you, you think of them all. All right, step four, let's look at where else our money goes. All those flexible expenses that we deal with every month. How about um, gas and groceries. We didn't include those on the variable expense, or um, I'm sorry, on the fixed expenses because they can vary a lot. You know, Thanksgiving, your grocery bill might go way up. Um, if you're taking a, a road trip with your family, your gas bill might go way up. Those are kind of unex uh, unplanned for expenses. So we want to include the rest of these under our flex expenses flexible expenses. So this is what we were, what else we're paying for to live. These are needs and wants and include a quality of life. If going to the movies every Friday is part of what makes you happy in life, then include that. Make sure that you are including in your spending plan all those facets of your life. Um, try to anticipate some of those monthly costs that we, we that sneak up on us. Uh, things like gift giving, haircuts, clothes, things like that that we don't think of, we, but we do have to spend our money on every month. Try to think of everything. I say that, but you won't. There'll be a time in the future when you, after you've done your spending plan, you'll be about to spend money on something and you'll think to yourself, this is not something I thought about in my spending plan, but look, I do spend money on these kinds of things. That's why a spending plan is always a work in progress. So let's see what flexible expenses we might find. Flexible expenses for my sample spending plan. I included gas. It looks like we get about a $30 tank a week. Some groceries. A um, little bit over $60 a week. For one person, that, that might be realistic. We'll see. Dining out, $100 a month. Hopefully, we don't stop and get a latte every morning because that can really add up if we do. Um, haircuts. Gaming apps, this is something this person likes to do is play games online. They did include a little bit of auto maintenance here. Maybe we budget for an oil change a month. We don't always get an oil change every month, but if we budget for that, then we have a little cushion in our spending plan to help pay for mm, those other things that come up on cars, like replacing a set of tires or windshield wipers. Have you realized how expensive those things have gotten lately? You know, the car maintenance, auto maintenance, it adds up so we want to make sure we have money in our spending plan for that gifts mom's gonna want that mother's day uh bouquet of flowers so let's let's plan for that and we don't always buy clothes every month but they do wear out we have to buy new shoes and every so often we want a nice new shirt so let's budget for that to happen on, on a, an occasional basis we're putting money in our account setting it aside with if we don't use it this month it'll be there for next month. So we came up with a total estimated flexible expenses of $520. This last step is putting it all together. So we've come up with a bunch of these numbers. We've looked at our expenses, our income and our expenses separately. Let's put it all together. What we're going to do 
is add together our fixed and flexible expenses, what the numbers we came up with, and subtract that from our, our income. We'll come up with either a positive or a negative number. If it's positive, wonderful. That means that you have more money than expenses. That's very rare in this country, by the way, so congratulations. If that happened, look at your expenses. Did you account for everything? If, um, if you did, then great. What are you going to do with that extra income? Are you going to apply it to getting to your goals that much faster? Or start being philanthropic with your money? Start donating to charity with extra? It's your choice. Now, if it's negative, now we have to think about how we can fix this. We need to find a way to cut back on our expenses or increase our income somehow. So, but the nice thing is we have all our information down on paper, our steps of our spending plan to go back and look at to see where we might be able to cut some of those costs. So here's what it looks like when we put it all together. With our example spending plan, we had an estimated monthly income of $1,632. Our fixed expenses and flexible expenses amount came together, added together came to $1,970, which shows that we're coming up $338 in the hole every month. If that's what's happening, how are we making this work? I ask that when I do this class in person and some of the answers I get are, well, we're robbing Peter to pay Paul. We're taking money that we need for this, for next month and we're using it this month and we're constantly behind and that's a stressful feeling. Or we're using credit cards to equalize these it, it, the income expenses. We're deferring those costs for the future if we're using a credit card. But we need to think about how we're handling this and what we can do to fix it. If we recall, um, on our fixed expenses, we were paying 160 for cable and internet. Perhaps it's time to um, drop the cable and rely on internet, see if we can lower our expenses there. Maybe we need to look at uh, reducing our expenses on clothing for just a temporary time. We can look at maybe taking a little bit longer to accomplish our goals, maybe instead of 12 months, 24 months to get our credit card bills pay off, paid off, it's going to be 26 months. But just adjusting those, those by those couple of months, we can increase, or I'm sorry, decrease our expenses in a way that helps bring us down to a zero balance budget, which is what we want right there. We want a zero balance budget. And that means if we come up with a zero here after subtracting our expenses from our income, that means we know that where all of our money is going and we have planned appropriately for all of our income to be used the way we want it to be used. That's effective budgeting. That's what the federal government should do. But let's not, we're not going to get into that. So either way, if you come up with a negative number, either income has to go up, expenses have to go down, or both. But now's the time when you see that, that negative number, that's your aha moment to fix this. That's it. We've gone through all the steps of creating a spending plan. Now we have to use it. And what it means is we need to track our spending and make sure that those numbers that we estimated, that they're pretty accurate. So for the next month, what we want to do is find a way to make sure we know how much money we're spending on things. We're going to track our spending. There's ways to do this. You can save every receipt for the next month for every expense. you. Every time you pay money, make sure you get a receipt. Throw it in a shoebox at, um, at home and at the end of the month, go back and take those receipts and categorize them the same in the same categories of, of your spending plan. Here's gas, here's groceries, here's dining out and then add up those totals and see how close you were on your estimates. You might have a surprise um, in, when you see your totals. A lot of us underestimate how much we're spending out. Um, you can use your online say, checking account information or a checkbook ledger to track your expenses. 
that's a handy way to do it. If you're using a debit card, all of your expenses are showing in your online, uh, on your online statement. Uh, there are computer programs, Excel, spreadsheets, things like that, that'll help you track your expenses. If you'd like to take, choose that route, there's a thing called the envelope method. It's kind of a way to track your spend, your spending as you're spending. And the way that one works, it's a, it's not quite as safe because it, it deals with cash. But what happens is when you get your paycheck, you cash your paycheck and put each fill a labeled envelope with a certain amount of cash. One envelope might say gas, one says groceries, one says dining out, and you put the appropriate amount of cash in there. If you happen to get to where you need more money in your gas envelope to pay for gas during the week before your next paycheck and you don't have it, well, it's got to come out of one of the other envelopes, doesn't it? So there goes your dining out money to put in the gas tank. But it's a way to help you control your spending little more control than tracking, but it, it works. Anyway, whatever method you choose to use, find one that you're comfortable with. Because if, if you're not com comfortable with Excel spreadsheets and that's how you're gonna try to track your expenses, you won't do it, we're, we're human. Human nature says that we're gonna use things that we're comfortable with. So find one that, w that will work for you and track your expenses at the end of the month, go back and see how you did with your estimates and adjust your spending plan accordingly. It takes maybe a, a whole hour once a month once you've done your spending plan to just adjust it and make sure you're on track with your spending and your goals. Simple. There are some sneaky little expenses that pop up and they take away our money. So we need to be careful of those, those leaks in spending, things like late fees. That's just a nuisance fee. It's money not spent on anything. It's just a penalty and we, we don't like those. Kind of like traffic tickets. Nobody budgets for a traffic, tic traffic ticket. I know people who should. Um, unused subscriptions is a waste of money. Overuse of services. What I mean by that is getting too reliant on maybe food delivery services. Uh, going out too often because you know it's always less expensive to make our own food at home. Uh, convenience shopping. It gets to be very expensive. You pay a dollar or two more for a gallon of milk if you buy it at a convenience store versus a regular grocery store. Uh, but that can be expensive to try to get to a regular grocery store if they're not in your around you. Um, ignoring repairs. We know that maintenance is usually less expensive than making repairs so if we just take a little time to maintain things it helps keep our expenses lower things like making sure the faucets aren't leaking we can help lower our utility bill by turning lights off when we're not in the room um, making sure that tvs aren't just broadcasting to no one we make sure we that, that we keep the air that we're paying to climate control inside our homes and, and, you know, that's nice of us all to help with the uh, global warming, but it's very expensive. We'll fi let's find other ways to fix the global warming problem. And impulse shopping. That's really a, a one that really help, makes money fall out of our pocket is when we're making purchases that we don't plan to make. So look at your leaks, the, where you might have leaks in spending and try to get those leaks plugged. There are some things that we do that actually can th knock our spending plan completely out of the water. Not just, not just a leak, but an actual um, waterfall. Lack of an emergency fund is one of them. If we don't have those cushions and that, that backup fund to make sure that we can handle life's unexpected expenses, that really puts us in a bind. Things like medical emergencies... Um, repair bills and auto accidents, we don't anticipate those. We need that emergency fund to help us get through those times. Uh, holidays, man, they just, we, we did budget for gift giving, but holidays come up and it seems like every one of them, Valentine's Day, you gotta throw a little bit of money at that. Halloween, you're buying $50 worth of candy for the neighborhood. We love holidays, but we need to make sure we do them in moderation so we're not putting ourselves in a compromised position to make everybody else happy. Well, um, to make ourselves happy. Everything, all things in moderation, including moderation, is what I always say. So 
think about those pitfalls that could destroy your spending plan and make sure you plan for some of these things like vacations and 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 have an emergency fund for the things you can't plan for. Well, all right, so now you've created your spending plan. You know how to do it, so you're going to continue to track your expenses and adjust your plan accordingly. When you see your, your expenses that you're tracking, you may need to revise your plan just a little bit for your actual money use. Find places to save, like we talked about those spending leaks. Make sure you plug those leaks and include all your household members in your planning. This really works, mom. When you include the kids in the goal of a dream vacation to Disney, you have a great backup when they're walking through the grocery store with you and see they see that toy hanging next to their favorite cereal and they go, I want, I want, and you go, yeah, but we didn't plan on this. If we buy this, then that makes it that much longer until we can go to Disney World. They understand that and it makes it, they they get on board with it. You can help help them to have better spending habits in the future too. I talked about plugging those spending leaks. There's lots of things we can do to to help improve our financial situation. Save your loose change. Never pay exact pennies for anything. Pay off with dollar bills and make sure you take that change and throw it in a jar every day at the end of the night. Um, it really adds up. You'd be surprised. Plan for big ticket item purchases. Make sure you do the research. Consumer Reports Magazine is one of my favorite resources. If you don't have a subscription, most of your county libraries do and you can spend an afternoon going through their annual appliance edition or their annual car edition to see who's rating each of these items and, and how and make sure you spend your money wisely when you finally purchase that big ticket item shop for food with a list and stick to it i'm serious don't go hungry make sure you have a list actually they it, recommendations are if you go when you're in a hurry like in between errands that helps you to not impulse buy so just some little tips but people are paid thousands of dollars to design grocery stores in a way that will encourage us to impulse shop. So we need to be smart consumers and realize that if we are shopping on the end caps, we may be impulse shopping. That's where they set up their bargain items that may or may not be a bargain. If we're standing and looking at the shelf and looking straight ahead at eye level, we're probably looking at the brand name most expensive item or more expensive item. If you look up, or look down at the bottom shelf, you'll find comparable items that you might want to test and see if they're worth switching to. Shop around for gas if you can. I'm not saying drive from one side of the county to the other just to save a few pennies per gallon, but notice the, the gas stations on your usual routes and make do some planning. Just glance up and say, okay, that looks like where I'm going to stop on my way home because my tank's getting low. There's all kinds of suggestions for saving money and you can use that link at the bottom of the screen there americasaves.org comes up with some great tips lists and lists of saving suggestions that might work for your family take a minute and browse those thank you for joining me for this short presentation on how to create a usable spending plan you'll notice that once you have your income and expenses under control you'll enjoy reaching your goals and set the next set of goals to, to work towards. Please join me for future presentations. If you, there's anything your extension office can do for you, please take advantage of this wonderful program.